we designed our WLED controller to be as small as possible, whilst being as versatile as we can make it. It supports a wide range of voltages from 4 to 36 volts, which many basic ESP32 boards don't. And that means you can run it in slightly unusual configurations, which I think makes it much easier to use. But as a result, most guys out there aren't really relevant to using it. So in this video, I'm going to cover all of the ways that you can officially run our controller. Let's dive in. Let's start with how it arrives. Like this, it's a bare circuit board. You simply break off the tabs. And you're left with this tiny little thing. This here is the bare controller itself. Now we'll start by covering how you wire it up to the actual LEDs. In most situations, you're simply going to wire all three of the wires from the strip into the WAGO terminals in the correct order, which you can check on the back of the board right behind the WAGO. Most strips come with a white ground, a green data and red power wires connected to the beginning of the strip and are often accompanied by extra red and white wires for injecting power from an external supply. These wires usually terminate with one of these JST connectors and they often include the corresponding female JST connector in the box so you can easily wire it to the controller. They usually even strip back for you to start with as well. It's also worth mentioning here that yes, when I say the start of the strip, I mean the start because addressable LEDs have a direction. So look out for the little arrows on the strip that denote which end is the beginning and which end is the end. So to wire it up, all you need is some sort of poking tool. You simply poke down the wires like this and insert them and then give them a tug just to make sure they're secure. Then we insert the data and the power. Voila. Once you have wired it to your LEDs, the easiest way to use it is pretty standard. You can run it from a normal 5 volt USB-C cable. But the nice thing about this is that it's designed to be used in this configuration to also power a 5 volt LED strip, which again many boards aren't really designed to do, even if it does kind of work. So if you are running a set of LEDs with a low enough power draw for a USB charger, you can happily run the whole lot from one. Couldn't be easier. The next most common way that you might use it is on setups that require more voltage or current. In these cases, you'll need an external power supply, and all you do in this case is simply wire the strip up to the board as previously mentioned. Connect it up like so, and then you simply connect the power supply to the power injection wires that we were mentioned earlier that are included at the beginning or the end of most strips. When using an external power supply, the only thing you do different is make sure that you do not also connect it to USB power because it will power up happily from any voltage that's coming into the strip itself. Again, could not be much easier. The final configuration, which you could use but is very rare, but I have used it briefly once before, is where the board cannot be powered from the strip for some reason. In my case, it was because I had the power supply connected to the opposite end of the strip. And by the time it got to the beginning of the strip that I was using, there wasn't enough voltage at the beginning to reliably run the board. But it's also possible that one day there might be greater than 46 volt strips on the market. Either way, in this case, you simply leave the power from the strip disconnected safely from the board. And when I say safely, I mean not leaving this exposed because there will still be voltage on this wire. So cap it off or cut it off. But an important tip here is to make sure that you do keep the ground connected. Otherwise, the data will be corrupted and it will display random colors along the strip. If you hadn't noticed already, on top of all this, our board also includes a microphone to do audio reactive effects like this. And the great thing about it is it can be used with a huge variety of strips and lights that are on the market today. There are these little seed pixels like this, which make great little fairy lights or Christmas decorations for your tree, and larger fairy lights like this, which are great on your house because they are also waterproof, and going from one strip to another couldn't be easier. In most cases, you simply swap the connector. And now we have the same pattern being displayed on these fairy lights, which would make for some awesome effects around a tree 
and I even have these around my window in the front of my house. And since they run WLED, which is great open source software, they also work well with some other great open source software, Home Assistant. So I have these automated to change for different festive seasons all around my house, all automatically. So when Christmas comes up, like now, they automatically apply Christmas colors and effects throughout my home. All that's left to say is at the end of the day, this is a development board. It is not a final product. So use at your own risk and take this advice at your own risk. It does assume that you have some basic knowledge of electronics and how to connect them properly and safely. I would also like to add that this is my first product and we are actually really happy to receive constructive criticism from you, the people that are interested in using it. So please let me know down in the comments or via any of the contact methods on my website, homeiswherethesmartis.uk, if you have any ideas or suggestions for the product. The actual final thing I would like to say is if you buy one of these, thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you find that you are able to do so, please consider supporting the channel in any other way you can. Simply buying any of these products from the links on my website will earn me a small commission. And of course, these are our products, so they will earn me a little bit of money. But also, if you're in a position to do so, I know money's tight for everyone at the moment, but please check out my Patreon if you feel like you can. I am really trying to get off the ground and make this my primary job. And whilst I'm really happy with the progress this channel has made in its first year, I'd love to be able to get to a point where I can really make my living doing this. I know so many of you have reached out to speak to me in my DMs and stuff, asking for advice about not only LED lights, but products in general. And I love giving my expertise, but ultimately it's got to pay the bills. So any help that you can give over on there on my website, the links are right at the bottom to both donate to me directly via Monzo link or via my Patreon. But as always, I hope you found this video helpful and useful and remember home is where the smart is.